Well, if you think we've been showing you this shot a lot, you're not wrong. Um, I'm living vicariously through this <laughs> Earth Cam footage of Wrigley Field right now. Opening day is here. Major League Baseball is with us once again. 162 games, all before things start to wear down in September and October. And we talk about the playoffs all again. Welcome to opening day 2023, but things are certainly going to look a lot different for Major League fans and players this year. The league will see some of the biggest changes we've ever seen in Major League Baseball history. The goal is to keep things more exciting and keep fans engaged. They're going to have wider bases, which should make for some exciting things. They're also going to have this pitch clock. Mm -hmm. If you've been watching spring training, you may have seen this. Pitchers, I have not, so tell me. Pitchers now have just 15 seconds to throw their next pitch. They'll get 20 seconds if a runner is on base. Now, Sports Illustrated reports that the pitch clock, which has been used in minor league baseball, has shaved about 30 minutes off of the average length of a game. It's about three Ooh. hours now. They're hoping Ooh. to get it down about two and a half hours, and they believe that might actually get more people to watch. How do the pitchers feel? Well, it's been interesting to see this because you've seen some instances, um, like Max Scherzer, who's a pitcher for the Mets, uh -huh. he's been playing with this and using it to his advantage. A batter gets out of the box, the pitch clock starts, the batter gets back in, and he, he throws it right away. Um, okay. We'll talk more about that, but I want to welcome in now a two-time World Series champion, Jason Grimsley. He used to pitch for the Yankees and a few other teams. He's got a great new book out. We'll talk more about the rules changes in just a second, Jason, but I also want to talk first about your book. It's called Cross Stitched. It's one man's journey from ruin to restoration. It's great to have you here, Jason. Thank, thank, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Our pleasure. And the, the life of a major league pitcher can be pretty wild, full of ups and downs. And you're living proof of that. And you write about this in your book, including the day you tried to kill yourself, August 21st of 2015. You say you were high on cocaine and drunk. You put a gun to your head and pulled the trigger, but nothing happened. Tell us how that moment changed your life. Uh, well, and, um, that was the beginning. It, it, it opened, opened my eyes to the, the grace and the love that not only the Lord has for me, but for my that my, my, my family has. Um, there were a lot of dark things that I'd, I'd hidden and suppressed for my entire life. I was uh, sexually abused when I was younger and didn't tell anybody until I was 48. And, um, you know, I just, I just carried that around with me. I believe you become an abuser or a protector when that happens to you. And I became an extreme protector. Mm. Uh, but it also scarred me in ways that I, I, I didn't really, I didn't really, acknowledge and uh, you know my entire life I felt like I was a hypocrite everywhere I went and everything I did I didn't really know who I was and then um, you had baseball baseball to that and the end of baseball that happening and uh, you know I was just living in a real dark place for a long time yeah, and it's, it's totally understandable I mean everyone's talking about how great you are but you have these inner demons and you, and you get into this in, in the book, and it's powerful. And I think it's very brave of someone like yourself to come out and admit this, um, because I know with professional athletes, a lot of times it's hard to be vulnerable, and you certainly do that in this book. So we commend yeah, you for that. I had, I had a really, I really had a really hard time. You know, I didn't, I wouldn't let anybody get close to me. You know, not even my family, my wife, my kids. Um, everybody was at arm's length. You know, I had I had a bunch of bunch of acquaintances, but very few friends. And um, you know, that that was. Um, it was a rough way to live. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone should read the book. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing account of your life and what it's like to be a major leaguer. Uh, before we go, I wanted to ask you, what do you think about these uh, rules changes? But one of the last games of spring training, my, my team, the Braves, it was a tie game, bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, and the pitch clock ran out, and the batter got called out, and that, that was the end of the game. I don't think that's going to happen during the regular season, but what do you think about these rules changes? <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's, um, I get what they're trying to do. You know, the, I think the biggest thing with the rule change is probably going to be the, the changing of the size of the bases. Yeah. You know, it's, it's probably going to make things a little bit safer, but you know how many bang bang plays there are at first place base, how many close plays there are at second base with catchers throwing runners out. You know, any little advantage you're going to give uh, to anybody, I think that one there is probably going to be the biggest one. Yeah. You know, as far as the pitch clock goes, if you can't figure it out in 15 seconds, you probably shouldn't be throwing a pitch in. Well, as a former catcher, I feel the same way. Uh, when your pitcher can't figure it out in 15 seconds, you get frustrated. Also, that's why I don't like the extended bases. It makes it harder to throw out the runners. So we'll see. Great to see you, Jason. Thanks for sharing your story with us and I encourage everyone to get the book. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it.